so now what are the examples of the hyperplasia so there is physiological hyperplasia as well as pathological hyperplasia so under physiological hyperplasia that is the increase in cell number it can be compensatory or it can be due to hormonal so the compensatory means if if in a case if there is a tumor in the right lobe of the liver that right lobe of the liver it can be removed and the left lobe can be preserved so from the left lobe the liver regenerate so that is a compensatory mechanism by hyperplasia from the left lobe of the liver this the liver can regenerate so the liver after partial hepatectomy hepatectomy now so in the breast so when you are taking the breast during puberty and during pregnancy so the hyperplasia there is hyperplasia due to the action of the hormones the number of cell is increasing so it is an example of hyperplasia so the pathologic condition it is seen when the hormone is excess the hormone is excess and if the androgen is excess it will lead to bph that is benign prostate hypertrophy benign prostate hyperplasia hyperplasia and if the estrogen is excess if the estrogen is excess there is endometrial hyperplasia the endometrium of uh, the number of cells of the endometrium of the uterus will increase and this can also lead to carcinoma that is endometrial carcinoma because increase in the abnormal increase in the number of cells it can lead to the endometrial carcinoma so the next cell adaptation it is by atrophy so in atrophy as you can see here there is decrease in cell size as well as there is decrease in the cell number so this is due to either there is decrease in protein synthesis or there is increase in the protein degradation the increase in protein degradation by the ubiquitone proteasome pathway so the protein degradation happens through the ubiquitone proteasome pathway or they can it it can be due to autophagy by the lysosome autophagy by the lysosome so these are the mechanisms which are involved in the atrophy so the example of atrophy so there are two type that is the physiological as well as the pathological so physiologically it is seen in the notochord the physiological atrophy it also is it is also seen in the thymus 
because as the si as the age increases the size of the thymus will reduce so pathologically we can see the senile senile atrophy due to that means due to old age then there can be the pressure atrophy and if there is a decrease in the blood supply to a region that region may undergo atrophy that may be the reason or it can be due to if the nerve is removed that is if there is denervation it can lead to atrophy or nutritional so if uh, there is a lack of nutrition it can lead to nutritional atrophy and even the disuse can also lead to atrophy that means if uh, there is a fracture of your arm uh, the and you are not moving that arm for some days that arm uh, the muscles of that arm it get it may get atrophied due to not using of that muscle and so that is called the disuse atrophy now there is something which is called as brown atrophy of heart it is seen during aging so during aging the there is a brown pigment which is uh, deposited uh, during the atrophy of heart and that pigment is the pigment responsible for the brown is the lipo fuskin lipo fuskin so in this image you can see the normal brain and the atrophied brain so here you can see there is increased space you can see that there is increased space in atrophy whereas in the normal brain the space is not that much increased so the next adaptation it is the metaplasia so in this type of adaptation as you can see it is the one group of differentiated cell type it is changing into another type that is one differentiated cell type it is converted in uh, converting into another i will give you an example so it will be more easy to understand and one more thing this is a reversible change this is a reversible change and what is the mechanism behind this metaplasia so the mechanism behind the metaplasia is the reprogramming of the reprogramming of stem cells so the reprogramming of the stem cells is a mechanism behind it for an example the most common metaplasia metaplasia which is seen in smokers that is we are having a pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium and in smokers it will due to this stimuli that is the noxious stimuli this epithelium it will be converted into a stratified squamous epithelium so this is a stratified squamous epithelium and this condition is called as so converting into squamous epithelium it is called as squamous metaplasia squamous metaplasia another classical example of metaplasia is barrett's esophagus so in barrett's esophagus the normally the esophagus it is lined by the stratified squamous epithelium a 
as you can see right here so if a person is uh, suffering from the jerd that is the gastro esophageal reflux disease so for the protection it's a protective mechanism the cells becomes columnar and this is a potential risk factor for adenocarcinoma adenocarcinoma of esophagus so it's a risk factor for the adenocarcinoma of esophagus so the barrett esophagus it can also be called as columnar lined esophagus because now the esophagus is lined by the columnar epithelium so it can be called as columnar lined esophagus in the barrett esophagus if this is a normal if i am saying that this is a esophageal biopsy so normally ideally there is stratified squamous epithelium as you can see right here and there is but in the barrett esophagus you can see here the glands you can see the glands so the glands are just so in histology a gland is a tubular structure which is lined by the columnar or the cuboidal epithelium so you can say that this is a barrett esophagus and as these are glands there is a chance for the adenocarcinoma so on h and d staining there is intestinal metaplasia so why this intestinal metaplasia because the intestine is lined by the columnar epithelium whereas here also you can see the tubules are lined by the there is a glands are lined by the columnar epithelium and they are having the goblet cells so the intestinal metaplasia and the goblet cells they are the characteristic feature of the barrett esophagus so next what is the special stain for the barrett esophagus actually this goblet cell it is containing mucin so the special stain is alcyon blue or muci carmine so this is a special stain because in barrett esophagus there is goblet cells so there is mucin so the special stain for mucin is the alcyon blue or the muci carmine whereas in the normal esophagus there is no goblet cells the earlier two example that we have discussed is about the metaplasia of the epithelium that is a in smokers as well as the barrett esophagus there is another metaplasia that is called as the connective tissue metaplasia or the mesenchymal metaplasia so an example of the connective tissue metaplasia is the myositis ossificans myositis ossificans here the muscle is converted into bone next which is the vitamin deficiency that leads to metaplasia vitamin a there is a vitamin a vitamin a deficiency it leads to metaplasia so these are the four different ways that a cell adapt so that's all thank you